Hi hat lovers, welcome back to Vintage Fashion Hat Chat. Norma Shepard here with the Mobile Millinery Museum. I'm also the author of five books on vintage fashion, including 1000 hats. And I just want to bring you a little museum update today. The last video um, that I did, uh, if you saw it, you'll know that we talked about uh, make and mend um, that uh, initiative during the Second World War. And we looked at a few hats from the archives that looked like they probably were um, either up, um, upcycled or perhaps uh, made from scratch by home milliners because we also talked about home millinery course. I have gone a little deeper into the archives today and found a piece from much earlier. Uh, seems to be from around um, the late Victorian or perhaps the Edwardian era. And it looks like something... Um, homemade now you could i probably should have shown them maybe on another video uh you know you could have referred to your um ladies home journal Godie's ladies book or those other uh fashion magazines that came out in the 1800s for i'll say patterns but really they were more instructions of how to make the latest hats and to be quite honest they're a little difficult to follow but uh, I'll deal with that on another video. But to me, um, as I look at this piece, this open crown, it seems to me that it might have been an effort by someone uh, in that era to do something very colorful. This fabric that is um, actually, <laughs> it's actually reversed on the inside. This, is, this side is the lining for this open crown. Uh, it is a silk taffeta beautiful beautiful colors and uh, it's been fashioned over an open crown straw so you know it is shredding it has that tendency as uh, a lot of the weighted silks did to simply shred and in peeking inside where there's an opening I can see that this is covered over an existing very old pink straw open crown uh, and they've you know they've done a, a nice job around the open crown finishing it with a little bit of grosgrain ribbon uh, in there there's some millinery stitches I can see on the inside but I don't think it was originally a, a professional piece anyway I thought you might be interested in that while we were on the subject and um, I also want to say another word about upcycling. This week, I, or maybe it was last week, um, well, <laughs> the story starts from last week. I had a stack of some 30-odd uh, bone china saucers that were orphans. Their cups had long been gone and broken, but they're too beautiful, really, um, to just throw away, and I'd wonder what to do with them. And I put them for sale on Marketplace, and um, a lovely artist contacted me and told me that she uses them for, uh, she uses all kinds of broken crockery for uh, jewelry making. So later this week, um, she gifted me with a couple of pieces of her jewelry, um, and she had used some of the um, crockery that I sold her to make this little gift for me, and, and they're lovely. So it just goes to show you that we can be so imaginative in reusing things uh, for a different purpose. Now I wanna show you the necklace. And I think it is just lovely how she used this piece of china from one of the broken saucers. Now she's also made a pair of earrings from the same piece. And very interesting. I had told her that I really did like um, the um, underside, the, the um, hallmark on one of the... Uh, <laughs> on one of the saucers and this is what it was she's made a hat pin out of this and you can see there's the mad hatter i absolutely love it so this is abs absolutely perfect uh regency england bone china made in england and there he is so uh and of course it's just one of these little type of of pins which is perfect just perfect for um 
for a hat. I didn't put it on today's hat and I'll talk about today's hat at the end but I did want to share that with you. Now um, another thing of course if, if you're not upcycling uh, from a vintage hat you can harvest uh, some of the trims. You can use them to make a new hat or to decorate a new hat and I just want to um, show you a few items that uh, are stored in this box. We've been uh, <laughs> recipients of many collections of vintage trims over the years. And just to give you an idea, sometimes you can start with the trim to get an inspiration. There's a sweet little tuft uh, rimmed in some silver wire. Uh, you know, <laughs> the ostrich plume. And lots of little pieces, you know, um, from different eras that can be recycled used to trim a fascinator. And uh, of course you can uh, you can purchase hat making supplies online and I can link to a supplier uh, in the description box for you. And there's a lot of great little pieces to get you started. Um, and then, of course, you can also order new millinery trims or, you know, find some great old, like this velvet corsage, little yellow stamens, blue centers, so pretty. And these, of course, can also be used on jewelry. So that's just a little, little inspiration for you if you're like me and you'd love a new hat, but you're hesitating to purchase one. Okay, uh, I also want to share with you an inquiry I had this week, and this is from Deirdre McDonald. This is a woman I met a few years ago. Uh, she was re she's uh, an academic researching uh, a relative of hers, uh, a Lily Jamon, who was a um, very accomplished milliner in Ontario. And this is... Uh, She's been researching the hats of this person. And actually the first one that she found was in, in my collection. And I'll admit that we, you know, we've probably cataloged over 3,000 um, historic hats now in the museum. And when I met Deirdre and she asked me about this Lily Jamon, I had really never come across one uh, to that time. And of course, it so often happens when something comes, you know, sort of comes into your consciousness. Uh, from out there. It's not long before you do find it. Um, and I had just been in a, um, I had been recently in um, a vintage shop in Hamilton and found this fabulous hat. Knew it was special <laughs> before I even looked at the um, label and sure enough it was uh, one of those that she had been seeking. But I do want to just um, share with you her recent correspondence. Uh, good afternoon, Norma. Since we last met up at Holland View Trail Retirement uh, Community in Aurora, uh, this is where I did a show and we agreed that we would meet there and um, I was able to um, let her get her hands on, uh, but not keep, this, uh, this wonderful hat. Now, um, I was presenting what she calls my working hats and I've often called them that. They are working hats. Um, and, um, she's continuing to work on her book about Lily Jamon. So hat lovers, hat researchers, watch for it. It's going to be fascinating. So she's calling to ask me, um, whether her recollection of, uh, the description of the hat was accurate. And she described it as salmon colored straw trimmed with white net and white organza blossoms and signed Lily Jamon. Now, the interesting thing about the signature on this hat is that um, it seems to me that it was definitely early in Lily's career because I'm going to show you the label first. Um, it's hand done on old a strip of old red velvet ribbon. And it looks like she's used some type of uh, Taylor's marking pen to uh, create that label. I mean, the hat is exquisite. I will give it a 
give it a show here. Absolutely exquisite. So I wouldn't say that she um, scrimped on the uh, label. It's just that uh, I expect this one was perhaps one of her first. Now she did make hats for theater for uh, Stratford in Ontario. But this terrific uh, fashion hat, I'm glad she asked me because no, it's not salmon colored, although the netting uh, gives that effect on the brim. So it's a beautiful red uh, Milan straw, gorgeous. I mean, just rounds and rounds and rounds of this fine straw. The crown, beautifully shaped. You can see where it's uh, been stitched from the center. And then of course, this beautiful rolled uh, brim. So this is what I would call a picture hat. It is narrow at the back, wide brim at the front, beautifully lined with black netting. And it has uh, the elastic, actually this, this isn't elasticized, this is a thread chignon strap. But that would secure it under the hair, keep it from blowing off. This uh, this crown is beautifully shaped and really it, it would uh, probably rest quite nicely except in a high wind. You wouldn't need the chignon strap. Look how gorgeous that is if you're going to tilt it. Um, maybe at the end I'll take off my hat and try this on. Now it's interesting because when I found this uh, hat, the seller identified it as a 1940s, and I would agree, uh, straw and tulle floral hat and she charged $50. So that would be maybe, mm, would it be a decade ago? It might've been close to that. So fairly contemporary uh, and a $50 price for a hat that has survived since the 1940s. And that's why I keep the tag on. Uh, the shop was the Edit in Hamilton. I'm not even sure if it's still there, but if you know Hamilton, uh, it was on Ottawa Street. And um, maybe I should look into that. Now these fabric flowers are gorgeous. And just look, it's a full garden of these. It's just fabulous. And I'm anxious to know, uh, Deidre has noted that she has found evidence of um, Lily's hats that she's made in other museums. So I'll be anxious to be able to look at those. I believe there's some in the McCord Museum. And um, yeah, so I wanted to um, bring that to you and to uh, Deirdre as well. So Deirdre, if you're watching, I will photograph this and I will photograph the label for you and send it along. So let me just, it's just, I have to, well, I'll talk about this one first and then I'll try that on. Uh, this one, of course, you know, I um, did not yield to temptation, although the temptation was great to purchase another new hat. Uh, the sales are on now at some of my favorite shops, but um, this is a, this is a beauty. Cheers me up. Beautiful green makes me think of spring, and of course this light green with the with the um, pink ostrich tips. Nice combination. So it's recycled from in the sense that I've worn this on other videos, but this uh, is another Maria Kirsik, and as always, she makes great pieces. It's a fascinator with a chignon strap. It doesn't budge when you've got this secured under your hair. And uh, yeah, what's not to love? Uh, Maria is one who does use vintage trims and also new materials, so you, you can't go wrong. And I will leave um, a, um, leave a link to her website in the description box. So we take you off and let's try the lily. Oh, it's just so great. Just so great. You know, if I don't want to talk to the people over here, I'll wear it this way. Likewise, over here, oh, it's just, just wonderful. And if you want to, what's that movie? Oh, is it the Angel Sisters? Um, where they're all wearing great picture hats. Anyway, 
uh, until I see you again, if you enjoyed this content, please hit like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the notification bell so you'll know uh, when I post again. And have a happy day.